the interesting thing about your time with the Seahawks, and there's a Tulsa connection here, is a receiver that the Oilers drafted. You got him up to Seattle, and he one of the greats of the game. Can you talk a little bit about Steve Largent? Well, Steve Largent was was uh, was one of those white shark slow guys. That's what everybody, you know, you know, they'd come in and I'd tell them, I'd say, you guys, y'all got to draft Steve Largent. Oh, no, no, he's too little, he's too short, he's too slow. <clears throat> and I'm going, well, all he is is a great player. And and so uh, I, I couldn't talk to anybody. I mean, nobody had had, you know, they just wouldn't listen to me. I said, this guy's the best in the country. And so, I, I mean, I just rave on about him. But, you know, we don't draft him, and the Oilers do. They draft him in the fourth round. And so uh, I get uh, – I, I get uh, 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 a call on the phone there, uh, you know, by Mansberger, and he says, uh, uh, they they just uh, cut your boy. And I went, what? He said, come down to the office. And so I came down there, and so uh, Patera's there, and Mansberger's there. And so I said, what's going on? They said, they just got through putting Steve Largent out on waivers. They do you now? This is after now. I'd already coached Zorn, and and you know during the spring, and so they they had kind of seen me, you know, do some coaching and talking and all that. So that I can't my stock had gone up a little bit as far as uh, believing me. So uh, I said, uh, so they said, do you still think he can play? I said, I'm going to tell you something. He'll be rookie of the year if you get him in here. And they went. Okay, you're going to get him. And so they offered Houston uh, an eighth-round pick and, uh, to take him off waivers because we would, might not have got him. And so we signed him. And he comes in about six days later. And he gets you know, he comes straight from the airport, jumps out of the taxi cab, and and uh, and so he goes into the locker room. And I said, get your locker, get your stuff on. And uh, we're going to run in the same off. I put the same offense in that we had at Tulsa. And so the passing game is identical. You won't have any problems. So let's go. Get on out there. So he comes out there on the field. He is terrible. He's tr- he is tripping. He's stumbling. He's dropping passes. He had one ball. He, he came around, and he right square in the face. And everybody's like, that's your guy, huh? So, uh, after practice, you know, he goes on into the locker room, and I go into the coaches. Everybody is just laughing at me. They go, "That's your boy? That that's Largent?" And I went, "No, that's not Steve Largent. I don't know who that is, but I'm fixing to go find out." So I go into the locker room where the players are dressing. And I go, Steve, let's go outside. And so uh, I said, what's the matter with you? And he goes, Jerry, I haven't slept in a week. A week. He said, you know, I got his father had uh, left him, and and uh, he had four brothers and sisters, and his mother didn't have any money. And, he, you know, he says, I've, I've got to support them. And I, he says, I, I haven't slept in a week. I said, go back to the hotel, go to bed, get some sleep, and I want to see Steve Largent tomorrow morning and get some rest. I want to see Steve Largent. So the next day, he goes out on the field, and he is not the same person. He's catching the ball and jumping up in the air, catching it one-handed, all this. Everybody's going, my dog's barking. He, everybody's going, what happened? I said, well, that's Steve Larson. Let's don't talk about anything else. Great story. I was lucky enough to get Steve Larson up for an interview. And he talked so highly of you and then talked about coming to Seattle. And because it was the same exact offense that he ran in Tulsa, how he had an advantage over every receiver that was trying to learn it. Being successful and making the NFL – comes down to if you fit the schemes. But, you know, Steve Largent goes to Houston, doesn't fit the scheme. He comes up to Seattle, he fits the scheme, has a Hall of Fame career. Unbelievable. Tell me he's standing in a line down 
there uh, at, at, at Houston, seven deep, seven deep, and, and he would get like one throw out of the whole practice, and, and uh, uh, they just weren't interested in a slow white boy. That's exactly what they said to him. So they were happy to. They were happy. We gave them. We, we gave them an eighth round pick for him, yeah. and I believe it was eighth round. And of course, you know that was one of the biggest uh, uh, mistakes the Oilers. You know, and they 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 never lived that down. I no. mean, they had that thrown at them the rest of the time they were in Houston. Well, you mm-hmm. traded away, the, you know, the greatest receiver in the history of the NFL. You know. <laughs> Or you gave away the, the the greatest receiver in the NFL. Of course, uh, Larson was the very first one to hit a hundred with touchdown passes. But I told everybody, I mean, I, I I I didn't have any problem at all putting my neck out. I said he's going to he's going to probably make rookie of the year. This is before he got there, and so then he gets there and he goes out there and falls all over himself. He looks like something from some some uh, movie from the 1920s, you know, and, and uh, you know, can't talk or, you know, is jumping all around crazy and, and falling down and looks like one of those long, horny movies. And uh, they go, that's your boy, huh? And, uh, boy, did I take a licking on that. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I said, no, no, that's not my boy. And so then that's when I had to talk with Lars and found out what's going on and said, just come on back and beat be Steve. Get some rest. Be Steve. The, the chemistry that Steve Largen had with Jim Zorn, man, that was special. Well, they both were refugees, you know. You know, they both were cast off. Zorn was was uh, uh, basically uh, in Pomona, uh, kind of like uh, just hanging around hoping the Cowboys were going to re-sign him, and Mansberger didn't re-sign him because he left and went to Seattle, but he knew where he was, and so he re-signed him, but he re-signed him to go to Seattle and not Dallas. So that's how they got Zorn. 